<laughs> it's a monster. Oh. This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Is this a high voltage power source or the ultimate conversation piece for a dinner party? Why not both? Powered by the infamous 555 circuit, this little gremlin creates massive arcs, is adjustable in frequency and power, and best of all, plays wireless audio. It's a similar power source to what ran my plasma infused river table. Except this blows that power source out of the water. So after a gentle push from my subscribers, I figured I'd build an improved plasma speaker and bring you along for the journey. I recently built a plasma infused river table which used an adjustable high voltage source to create fascinating effects with neon plasma. At the end, I asked a serious question. As well as if you'd like me to make a video on that adjustable high voltage power supply I built. Well, the people spoke. But if you're going to rebuild something, what a great opportunity to just make it better. So I made it better. The driving circuitry for this power supply is built with off-the-shelf components. Per usual, this required a quick drive to my local hunting grounds, Plasma Electronics. With familiar faces, it's where studious hunters go to forage for their next victims, which for this project included a variety of items all waiting patiently for their plasma destiny. Collectively, these items included a perf board, 555 timing chip, a 100 nanofarad cap, a 68, 1000, and 11,000 ohm resistor, one nanofarad timing cap, a 5 amp diode, LED, a 1 microhenry inductor, another 1K resistor, 10K resistor, and neon indicator bulb, 100K potentiometer, 470 microfarad cap, and a lug connector for an IRFP 260N MOSFET. <sighs> when assembled, they work to pulse power into a flyback transformer, the last item for this power source. Now, flybacks come in two main groups. You've got DC and AC. Now, DC is completely flooded the market. You can get these anywhere. You can pull them from old TV sets. But finding a good AC flyback is a hell of a lot harder. Anybody in the high voltage field will confirm this vile truth. It is a war I never thought I'd live to see. This circuit works with giant flybacks, smaller ones, and even little inverters like this feller. This one's super impressive for its size, and it came from a backlight board from a flat screen. Hell, even flybacks with no soul will work. Because I know the struggle, I've left links in the description down below for both AC flybacks and DC. As a preference, I like using bolts as electrical connections, so I added two for the battery input and two for the transformer output. With the board populated, the easy part was done. Now it's time for the hard part, the group therapy, for soldering these rebellious little souls into one coherent family. Flipping it around, this is where the components are wired together, and the connections follow this schematic precisely. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. My third grade teacher would be proud. That board constituted the majority of the build and the hardest part as well, so if you're able to follow along in the past minute, kudos. Here's a cookie. Well, what's left of it? This guy's all wired up, so it should pulse power at about mm, 15 to 50 kilohertz. So I'm gonna pair it up with a random flyback transformer and see what kind of arcs I can get. Perfect. That's a perfect square wave. Okay, yeah, circuit's working great. Let's give it a try. Ah, oh, beautiful. Look at that. So now it's at 15 volts. Ooh, yeah. That's a good three, four centimeters long. Now this circuit alone is not Bluetooth capable. Looking back at my musical ignition coil video, I used a separate Bluetooth receiver that shared power with the circuit. It got the job done, but while the circuit could take 25 volts, the Bluetooth burned out above 5. So this required voltage regulators, and look how big and bulky it was. Yeah, this time around I wanted something simpler and more compact. So I trekked into the Amazon. A quick search brought up a huge variety of Bluetooth receiver boards. 
After browsing for a bit, I ordered a Bluetooth board capable of running off 12 to 24 volts, which was perfect. As soon as I received the board, I was a huge fan of how compact it was. Plus, it had solid lug connectors for both the power input and the audio output. So, I wired the Bluetooth board directly to the battery input and connected the audio out to pin 5 on the 555 chip. Okay, I've got everything wired up and I busted out the flamingos for good luck. This is gonna be sick. Let's try something suiting. Hmm. No! So it just does the beat. Ugh. This confused me and I spent some time adjusting the frequency of the circuit. Higher frequencies didn't help much and adjusting it to lower frequencies didn't seem to have a significant impact either. That's so weird. Reviewing the board's Amazon page, something stood out to me. Right here. It has short circuit protection, so I wondered if I was pulling too much current somewhere. Definitely not on the input, but perhaps it was pulling too much current on the audio out. Pulling out a few resistors, I ran some tests. First, I added one kilo ohms of resistance. This is with a 1K resistor and a different song. Oh! <laughs> Hell yeah! That is really clear. Woo! This motivated me, so next I tried half that resistance. I wonder if this will be any different. Ah, oh, That is way clearer. <laughs> Lastly, I tried 300 ohms and added an AC capacitor like you're supposed to. The results blew my mind, and you'll see them here shortly. This circuit was going to do wonders. Create thousands of volts, be frequency adjustable, Bluetooth enabled. It was perfect. It was only missing one thing. A home. And let me tell you, no circuit of mine will wander the streets looking for warmth. So I busted out my giant table saw, slapped down some plasma plastic, and got to work. After some assembly, here's what I'm looking at. Everything in the circuit fit together really nicely, and I added a huge heat sink to increase run times, an on-off switch, because why not, and the Bluetooth board is snuggling right down here. One happy oscillating family, ready to be tested. It's time to see if when this is all compacted together, if all the systems work like they're supposed to. I have no idea. Um, I'm gonna run it off of a 14 volt battery and the same transformer I've been using during testing. Here goes nothing. Whew. Please work, please work. Yes! <laughs> this plasma game is on point. Ah, oh, so it still works perfectly uh, when it's all together. But what about the music? Oh. Oh, that's amazing. That is so clear. Music? No music. Music? No music. Ha! Woo! This victory was softened by the fact that I was testing with a DC flyback. Shameful, really, stooping to such levels. So, I decided to build my own AC flyback. And to do so required knowledge I've learned from mostly online sources over the years, Brilliant.org being one of my favorites because I've used them for several of my videos. Let's check it out. It's an incredible way to learn physics and science in an interactive way. And topics range from mechanics and electronics to advanced mathematics and even chemistry. They have thousands of lessons with exclusive new content added monthly. Their electricity and magnetism section is on point with lessons I've been able to relate to such as their charges on a string course, which explain the science behind my living fractal pattern video and the video on my next gen ionic thruster. Their astrophysics section is also a total gem, which I've used to better understand nuclear fusion. If you recall, I built a nuclear fuser a few videos back. Their energy production in STARS course is amazing and covers why atomic nuclei sometimes need a bit of a push in order to fuse and why that spills power output. Every lesson is full of interactive animations and graphics and thought-provoking multiple-choice questions. 
If you get the question wrong, it breaks down the correct answer for you so that you end up walking away learning a thing or two. Get started for free by going to brilliant.org slash plasma channel or click the link in the description down below. The first 200 of you will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. All right, let's make some arcs, man. When it comes to my relationships, I value loyalty and trustworthiness. So that definitely excludes DC flybacks. Ultimately, I decided to wind my own AC flyback on a spare core I had lying around. After a few hours of 3D design, I came up with a secondary winding that should get the job done. I then whispered tender words to my 3D printer and it kindly spit out my new design. The secondary is split into four sections, and I might encase these windings in resin. Uh, maybe. I'm kind of scarred after the river table incident. I've never made a flyback before, so I don't know if this is going to blow up or not. Oh, it sounds good. Ah, oh, yeah. Oh, that's epic. <laughs> Man, this is insane. This is just insane. That's incredible. I then pushed it to 15 volt input and the arcs were absurd. Ah, it's freaking huge. But it quickly started to self-destruct. God, that first design was biblical until it arced through the plastic to the core and self-destructed as you might have seen. So back to the drawing board. And God, did I do some drawing. And again, and again. Each time they'd scream Axios and self-destruct. Until I came up with this final design. It turned out to be the savior I needed and I'll share the 3D files with my Patreons. Sweet baby Jesus. Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> it's a monster. Mm, me likey. And the audio quality was about the same with the new AC transformer as well. So how does it play music? How this works is simpler than you might think. The uh, heart of this build is an infamous 555 timing circuit that, hear me out, was designed generations ago. It's really historic and produces an adjustable square wave signal, aka an on-off pulsing signal into a digital switch or MOSFET. This causes the MOSFET to pulse power into the transformer. Flybacks take these pulses and convert them into high voltage arcs. The potentiometer simply speeds up or slows down the rate of these pulses. Now the Bluetooth comes in because there's a pin, pin 5 on the 555 chip that allows for external control of the frequency that it outputs. When you feed pin 5 an audio signal, the chip outputs a combination of the pulses it's supposed to, plus the pulses of the audio input. That feeds into the transformer, it makes arcs with modified frequencies, and we hear that as beautiful music. Oh. Now admittedly, being a maker, isn't for everybody, so I'll provide some links to pre-made high voltage power sources, including AC. In particular, check out Images Scientific. They have a sick flyback kit and they're working on several others. I'm gonna enjoy these for a really long time and I learned a lot in the process of doing this video. Hopefully you learned a thing or two as well. As usual, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. A massive thank you to all my Patreons and thank you for watching. And don't forget, every day's a flamingo day. You stay classy.